I'm James Glass and in this video I'm going to show you how to tension up a wheel that you just built. And ideally the tools that you're going to have for this will be a dishing tool. That's this guy. A pretty decent quality truing stand which is this guy. and a spoke wrench, which is this guy. This is one of the older Park uh, higher quality spoke wrenches. Um, they've actually come up with an, an even more ergonomic design. These were the, you might see these in black or red or green or yellow. Um, the color denotes the size of the uh, nipple. There's a little, it's kind of like a, you can think of it as like um, different size nuts and bolts, different wrenches go on different size nuts and bolts, same thing here. Finally, though it's not absolutely necessary, um, it's not a bad idea to have a tension meter, a tensionometer, um, to check your work when you're done to make sure that your spokes are not too tight and not too loose, so the proper tension, that they are all relatively the same tension, and that um, the they're not the they're, that the tension that you measure and there's another video I, I I've made on just a the tensionometer um, that the tension that you measure conforms to uh, manufacturer hub and rim manufacturer guidelines. When you tension this wheel up, if it's really super loose, wheels is going to fall apart, it's gonna taco and fall apart. If it's too tight, you might be able to ride it for a while, but the wheel's still going to fall apart because the most likely thing that will happen is the nipples will pull through the rim, um, especially on rims that don't have eyelets, and, um, and or there will be hub damage. Um, you'll be popping spokes all the time because they're so incredibly tight. And so you can do damage to the spokes, damage to the rim, damage to the hub. Not to mention, you know, anytime you have a wheel that goes berserk, you're gonna have, if you have rim brakes, you're going to have braking problems, you could have an accident. Um, you know, your wheels are vital to your safety as you ride. So building them properly and building them correctly means uh, a safe ride. You've got enough obstacles out there navigating um, crazy motorists and you know if you're mountain biking trees and rocks and whatnot so um, the world is full of enough danger that the wheels that you build shouldn't add to that danger. So it's not bad to check your work with the Park TM1 tension meter. Um, kind of Kind of nice. So Without further ado, here's the basics to tensioning up a wheel. First, you have to lace it, and there's a I made a video about lacing, um, and it's posted also somewhere here in my YouTube channel. And in order to do that, you can go Google um, how to calculate spoke length and which hubs and things you should use. Just go do your research and um, lace the thing up, and then once it's completely laced and you've got hopefully a reasonable truing stand. Set the thing in the truing stand and um, let me show you how to do that. This is the truing stand. You can, it adjusts back and forth and over here, where my hand is, there is a knob that tightens this in so that the wheel is stationary. Okay? So, the nice thing about this is if you've got yourself a decent truing stand, you have a secure place to build your, your wheel. It is vitally important that the hub be properly adjusted. Um, if you have a loose hub, you're never going to have an accurately true wheel. Um, because you're going to have movement in the bearing system that will telescope down here to the rim as you go to true the thing up in the end. More on that later. But clamp this thing in your truing stand, making first sure, absolutely positive, that you've adjusted the hub properly. What I did with these hubs is I just went ahead. These are these are um, uh, older school uh, bearing hubs. They're Dior hubs. They're, they're fine hubs. They're just for my townie bike. Um, I went ahead and greased them all up, lubed them up and um, cleaned them and, and adjusted them properly even before I laced the, um, laced the rim. So these hubs are, are overhauled and ready to go. So the next step 
after you've got your wheel mounted in the stand, your hub is true, is and you've already laced these up and each one of these nipples has been tightened to the spoke. That's more of that in my other video. You always use a baseline reference of the valve uh, stem hole as the working point. This is this happens to be the valve stem hole here. I'm always going to work from this point. I'm always going to work all the way around. And I'm going to use a nipple driver or you can use a screwdriver if you don't happen to have one. And I'm going to bring all of the spokes up about one thread showing from uh, the nipple. So I'm going to drive, I'm just going to take a screwdriver from the outside and here we go, here's one. And I'm going to dial this thing all the way up until I only see one thread showing. I'm going to do that all the way around. At this point, um, all of the nipples are exactly the same distance on the hub. But remember that dishing tool I showed you earlier. Um, depending upon whether it's front hub or rear hub, dish means this. It's very simple. It's the center line of, not the hub, but the center line between where it mounts on the bike, either the fork up front or the frame in the back, and the center line of the wheel. When you're all done, you absolutely want the middle of the wheel to be to the middle of where it's going to be in the frame. Different spoke lengths are, are going to help you do this because, um, and we talk, I talk about that in my other video, because when we go ride, we can't just, you know, we can't ride with the, with, the, with the rim way off to the left or way off to the right. If you've got rim brakes, you're not going to be able to get them adjusted very well. And the wheel's not going to be very strong. It's not going to be a decent wheel. So when you get to the point where you um, have everything dialed in, in this case, generally speaking one thread showing is a good baseline to start. If you need to pull the rim left or right, in the case of a, the most common case is going to be a rear hub with a cassette on the back, especially the modern cassettes are you know nine speed or newer, they're a little bit deeper. You're going to then go and take every other one on the drive side, starting again at the beginning, and do one extra full turn of the nipple so that the spokes on the drive side are a little bit tighter and you're going to be pulling the rim a little bit over to the drive side. You can make more dish adjustments once the wheel gets to be a little bit tension, no problem. Um, you can move the rim left and right several millimeters um, when the wheel is partially tensioned without an issue. But, you, but generally speaking, unless you're working, happen to be working on a front hub um, without disc brakes, um, where your spoke lengths are going to be the same left and right. Generally speaking, you might as well go ahead and start accounting for dish now, um, and you can then you'll have less work to do later. I recommend instead of taking a lot of time in this video talking about dish, I just recommend you go Google that, and um, and there'll be pictures and diagrams and everything. So, so that's it. So step one: hub adjustment. Mount this thing in here. Step two drive your nipples up with a with a nipple driver or a screwdriver so that they're all the same length. Step three is if you know you're going to have to deal with dish, go ahead and tighten the nipples a little bit more on the side that's going to be um, toward the dish. Um, and then step four is you get out your handy spoke wrench that's the right size for the nipple. If you use the wrong size spoke wrench and you round off all your nipples, you've hosed yourself. You'll never be able to true the wheel ever again in the future without replacing the nipples. So make sure that you've got the right size spoke wrench. So step four is you're going to then at that point go around and just do half turns. You're going to put the, you're going to put the spoke wrench on the nipple and literally, let's focus in on that. You're going to put the spoke wrench on the nipple and you can kind of see the open here and you're going to turn it halfway. And you're going to do that all the way around, starting at the valve hole and just keep working on it until you get a little bit of tension. And then step five is when you got a little bit of tension, your wheel's not floppy anymore, then refocus. Then when your wheel's not floppy anymore, you can um, begin to do some basic trimming and uh, you can check for round. Those five snaps will get your wheel basically built. 
there's more to it than that and I'm going to go ahead and tension this up and I'm going to do those, those first five steps and then I'm going to come back and give you some pointers on how to build a really good wheel. The most important thing to remember during this whole process is when you're using the spoke wrench, everything's backwards. When you're using the spoke wrench, everything is backwards. It is right hand thread, so it is righty tighty lefty loosey, but you're working from the opposite side. So in this case, lefty is going to be tighty. When you drive your when you drive your nipples in from the outside like this, you are going to be turning clockwise. You're going to be turning right to tighten them. However, when you come around to the other side and you put your spoke wrench on, that same action that is going to be mirrored. So you're going to have to turn left to tighten it, right to loosen it. So, without further ado, I'll go ahead, I'll knock, I've, I'm going to knock out those five steps, I've already adjusted the hub, so I'm going to go ahead and drive all these things up, and I'm going to get some real light basic tension on here, and then we will talk about really building a quality wheel, when it's all in the tensioning. If you want to build a good wheel, it has to be tensioned properly. Beyond, you can have the best components in the world, you have the best rims, you have the best hubs, you have the best spokes. You can lace it up perfectly, but if you tension the wheel incorrectly, if you do a bad job of tensioning, your wheel is going to be crap. Straight up crap. Tensioning the wheel is the one key thing in all wheel builds. No substitute it has to be done right. Okay, so I have, using a screwdriver, because I couldn't find my nipple driver, I, um, I've lost it, I have driven all of the spokes in from the outside so that one thread shows. This gives me a baseline of knowing the distance between the hub and the rim all the way around. Um, in this case, I have a front hub that has a disc. I'm going to need to set the rim a little bit farther over toward the disc side. We need, I already have shorter spokes on that side. We talked a little bit about this in the, in the uh, wheel building video, the, the other video. Um, and I, but the shorter spokes is probably not going to be enough. So having completed step one, which was hub adjustment, I've completed step two, which is drive all these things up. Now I'm going to do step three. I'm going to go and turn one full turn of every spoke on the disc side and that's going to pull the rim a little bit farther over so that we get a good dish in the end. So the center line of our rim is in the middle between our dropouts, um, in this case the fork dropouts, uh, when we have it on the bike. So I'm going to do that now. So you can probably see I'm skipping every other spoke. So I have now completed step three. Step four is I'm going to take my handy dandy park spoke wrench and I'm going to go around and I'm going to do half a turn. Again, starting at the valve stem. This is the valve stem. And I'm going to do half a turn on every spoke. Um, and it, this is a little bit loose, so I'm going to go ahead and do a full turn. So every single spoke, I'm going to do one full turn. And I'm going to do this all the way around. And you'll notice your nipples aren't necessarily all going to be in the same place. And so your full turn, your full 360 degree turn, is not always going to start and end in the same place, but that's okay. That's a trivial matter not to get worried about. And you'll feel a little bit of resistance from the spoke prep uh, that's on the threads. That's also fine. And you know, you might have a little more spoke prep on some threads than others. And so the spoke uh, wrench will have a little bit different resistance. Um, you know, sometimes what winds up happening is you might have gotten a little dab of extra spoke prep and, and that nipple is going to be hard to turn. Ideally I try to minimize, I use the minimal amount of spoke prep, I try to minimize how difficult it is to turn the nipple because later on for truing and, and detailed tensioning 
that becomes pretty problematic. Now, of course, you can't see this from the video, but I have this, this wheel has already got a really very good amount of tension. Some of the spokes are still loose, some are a little bit tighter. And that's okay, we'll deal with that later. But um, at this point, we're ready to move on to step five, which is to go ahead and, and do some basic truing and do some basic, just check the, the wheel, increasing the tension as we go, constantly checking three key variables true, round, and tension. True, round, and tension. True, round, and tension. The relative relationship of those three things is going to determine the quality of your wheel build. And like I said earlier, if you don't get that right, if you don't tension this wheel correctly, get it straight, get it round, um, you've just wasted time and money. And if you spend a lot of money on high quality hubs and, and spokes and rims, then you've wasted a lot of money. So um, yeah, that's what's next. We're going to basically finish off this wheel. And I can't really translate all of that to you through video um, in a meaningful way. I can't basically step inside your minds. Um, but that's okay. I can give you some pointers on, and I'm going to give you some pointers on how you can basically keep those three variables. Um, and it, you can look at how the relationship between the tension on the wheel um, affects the roundness of the wheel and affects the trueness of the wheel and also affects the quality of how strong the wheel is when it's done. So we're going to go back to the valve stem. And where's the valve stem? Must have missed it. There it is. And in this case, since I still do have some looseness, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to do half a turn. And we want to approach this very cautiously because what we don't want to do is over tension the wheel while it's still not true and round. Now we're going to dial the, and you can go Google how a truing stand works. I won't waste a lot of time on that. But basically you can see this device coming up and down, right, with these little arms. This allows me to adjust to different size wheels. So if I'm truing like a, a mountain bike wheel, I can raise it really high. Um, this is a 700 C wheel, so, so I can road wheel, so I can lower it down. I suppose if I was doing a 20 inch wheel, I could dial it way up. So I can adjust this for height. And then on this um, measurement, let's get down here. Here we go. On this little guy, it allows me to measure the distance between the rim and the end of one of these little arms. And as I spin the wheel around, it'll show me where um, the rim is not perfectly true and straight and I can make adjustments. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's get this guy back up. Okay, so I now have enough tension on all of these spokes. I don't feel any real loose stragglers, although we might find one, that um, I'm gonna give them all a little squeeze, make sure everything's seated. I now have enough tension on these spokes that we're going to check this thing for round. To do that, I'm going to drop this guy down and I'm going to look, raise it up, till it just makes a little sound where I can hear it rubbing. So I'm rubbing, so the wheel's 360 degrees. And I'm rubbing probably 60 degrees-ish, less than 90 for sure, less than a quarter. Um, from about here to about here. So from this spoke to this spoke, I'm going to tighten up. I'm going to, in order to raise the wheel inward here so it's not hitting, I need to tighten a left side spoke and a right side spoke to pull the rim up. And I'm going to do that. I'm not going to go to these two outer ones yet. Probably just do the four in the middle. So I'm gonna do one on the left, I'm gonna go half a turn, do one on the right, go half a turn, I'm gonna do one on the left, half a turn, do one on the right, half a turn. Now let's see if that does it. Much better. Now I still have something in another spot on the on another part of the rim. And it's really just gonna be these two. So I'm gonna do a, a right side one, half a turn. I'm gonna do a left side one, half a turn. Again, in order to pull the rims 
closer to the hub in that point, I need to grab a left and a right side spoke from that point and turn them both an equal amount and pull the rim in toward the hub. And I got one more spot. And we'll do half turn and half turn. And right there, we'll do half turn and half turn. And here we're going to go half turn and half turn. And half turn. Turn. My cat camera turned off automatically. I'm not, uh, hopefully, I, uh, you probably missed all that, but doing the out around, what I did was, I was hoping to do this one continuous shot to show you that I did not change the relationship of this. This is just as high as it was when I started out. And what I did, by tightening a left side spoke and a right side spoke right next to each other, I brought the wheel into round. And I am within a quarter of a millimeter at this point of round, which is perfectly acceptable for this early in the tension. And the rim is not touching the gauge in any way. So now let's go ahead and do the first true adjustment. So I'm going to raise the, the, the truing stand up so that my gauges, the arm gauges, come in contact with the rim. Okay, so I have, a, I have a point here on the side opposite the camera that's touching. What I want to do is pull it toward the camera. So I'm going to select a spoke on that side, that's my left, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to give that a half a turn but at the same time, I'm going to come over here to the right side, the spoke right next to it, and give it a, a loosening action. Okay? Okay, I found another spot. So to pull the wheel left or right, it's always a matter of turning one side and loosening the other. That's extremely important. You can't simply tighten the spokes on one side without adjusting the spokes on the other. And that is looking great. My wheel at this point is within half a millimeter of true. Okay. Now, still very early in the tension. Um, I can feel, without even putting a tension, tension meter on it, tensionometer, I can feel that these spokes are still too loose. But just for fun, let's, let's, take, a, let's take a random measurement. Um, this reads 16, and as I explained in the, in the video on, on how this works, this number 16 is totally arbitrary, it's just to the tool. I, I can, I'll plug this along with 31 other numbers from 32 spokes into the app, and that'll tell me whether or not it's too loose or too tight. But um, I happen to know that I want to get values on this tool between 20 and 23. Um, I know that if I ultimately get this wheel roughly in that range, that um, it'll be properly tensioned. Um, I only know that from experience, not to mention the fact that I just did, the, this is the front wheel, I just did the rear wheel last night and I double checked it in the app. So the same rims, um, the same hubs, the same spokes. Um, so I know what's with an acceptable manufacturer tolerances. But yeah, so 16 is not enough. So I know I've got to do some more tensioning. Um, but what I'm going to do real quick, is I'm going to go around and I'm just going to feel every spoke and I'm going to look for anything that's really loose. Like if I just got one that's just like crazy loose. And if I do, that happens sometimes. Um, that one's pretty crazy loose. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dial this thing up a little bit and just, I'm not going to make it very, really tight. I'm not going to make it tight enough to affect tension. I'm not going to make it tight enough to, to pull the wheel up or left or right. I'm just going to go ahead and take the crazy wiggleness out of it. And that happens. Even when, you, um, even when you get done and you measure everything with a, a tension meter, you are going to notice that it's not going to be exact. Because of 
a whole lot of variables, um, you know, differences and 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 a lot of things that just are outside the wheel, the control of the wheel belt, manufacturer build tolerances, um, you know, things that that aren't relevant to making a good wheel. You're going to get, um, you're not going to get exactly the same tension on every single spoke to make a perfectly true and round and good wheel. So don't get too stressed about the fact that your tension meter is not going to um, give you exactly the same number. Uh, you'll get done and you'll be in a, in, a, in a window. There'll be nominal values. Like I said, uh, I happen to know, here's another one that's a little bit loose. I happen to know for, for this uh, particular wheel, we're looking for, on the park meter, we're looking for values between uh, 20 and 23. So, okay. Now, I'm gonna double check for true. One little spot here, we're gonna pull that over. Tightening the opposite side, loosening this side. Good, and I'm gonna check for round. Basically, at this point, it's a game of constantly checking. I got one spot here. At this point, it's a game of constantly checking for, that's great, we're, we're, we're doing great, for round, true, and tension. So, now we're ready to tighten this thing up a little bit more. Going back to the valve stem, I'm going to do, I happen to know that I've got a ways to go. You know, I can just feel this, plus you can quantify it with the tension meter. I'm going to go ahead and do a half turn on, again on everything. If you weren't sure, now's the time where you start dropping down into quarter turns so that you don't over tension the wheel. Um, my experience tells me that I can afford to do a half a turn all the way around. And remember, when I tighten this half a turn, opposite is going to be tightened half a turn. If the effective tightening is a full turn, you know, when you think about, you know, the relationship of the, the whole wheel. And so, um, this is also why spoke length is extremely important. If you selected spokes that were too long, you bottom out um, in the nipples before you ever had a chance to tension the wheel properly. And if they were too short, you might not have enough threads in the nipple so that they didn't pull out. Now, there's a couple of these, if you're looking closely, that are really, really tight. And so, I mean, I can feel the tension on them are a little bit, is a little bit higher. So I'm not going a full half turn on those. And um, that's okay, because we're right after this, we're going to go ahead and check again for true and round. Even though you started out by trying to make, when you build your wheel, you tried to make your, um, your spokes all the same tension by driving them up one thread away, it, it, it's not going to be perfect. And so you're going to have to be fluid and you're going to have to adapt to um, the circumstances that you find as you true the wheel. Okay, I'm within half a millimeter there. Uh, that means that the little gauge, the alarm that comes up here, um, I'm, I'm a half a millimeter away from the rim without it coming anywhere near the rim. I'm going to go ahead and check for round again. so slight, but I'll go ahead and just do like a quarter turn here and here. <laughs> That's actually the weld. So this is a rim imperfection. Hear that? That's not actually the wheel. If you look really closely, you'll see that this is a, um, 
Well, actually, this is not weld, it's pinned and slotted, but this is where the, the rim comes together. And I'm not going to tighten that because it's actually a small machining defect in the rim. It, it happens. So just for fun, so we're, we're totally true, we're totally round. Just for fun, what did half a turn get us on average? We'll just take a couple of random samples. It brought us up into the, for most of these, into the 20s. And, you know, you can feel it. Well, I have to take a break and go drink some beer and eat a burger with my friends. Um, but when I come back, I am going to uh, finish the, the final couple rounds of tensioning, which will be going around and doing like quarter turns and eighth turns until we get exactly what we want. And I'll go look for, again, loose spokes and, uh, or spokes that might be too tight, either one of those, and kind of dial those down as long as they don't affect round and trueness. Uh, I'm going to dial those things in. And anyway, you just keep going until you get all the spokes roughly within 20, and for this particular application, between 20 and 23. And you keep tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it until the wheel is perfectly round and perfectly true and your tension is exactly where you want it. That's it. So, um, yeah, I, um, I bid you good luck in your wheel building. And like I said, I will um, uh, also post a video on just this tool and some highlights of this tool. And I've already posted a video on um, lacing up a wheel. So those three videos should, and, and I, I talked somewhat at length while still trying to be brief um, about the highlights, the important things. Quickly to review, hub adjustment, fundamentally important. Use a screwdriver or a nipple driver to drive everything up to roughly the same place. Adjust for dish. Um, oh, I forgot to show you the dish tool. So I'm taking, okay, dish tool, dish tool, rim. Set the dish tool so that it lines up on the outside of the rim. Drop this adjustable bar down to the outside of the hub. Take a measurement on one side, flip it over, and compare it to the other side. Okay, so I'm off about five millimeters, even though we tried to make some accommodation for that by dialing that one side more. No problem. I know since I'm short on this side, I need to bring the rim over. So the spokes on the side that I'm short on are the ones that I'm going to adjust. And, but I'm going to touch all the spokes. I'm going to tighten this side while I loosen the other side to bring the dish in. And like I said, go Google that. Um, and you'll learn all that you need to learn about dishing. There's no point in me um, spending a lot more time in this video doing it. It's a vitally important thing, but if you've come this far and you've figured out how to build a wheel by lacing it, um, you've already figured out how to do a hub adjustment, you've already figured out how to do the, the, the hit the big three, the, the tension, the true, and the round, um, dishing is going to be a piece of cake. And like I said, I'm going to go have beer and a burger with my friend, so I'll dish this and do the final tension later. Um, as you come toward the end, you'll keep making smaller and smaller adjustments to get the things that you want. You'll, you'll dish it, you'll tighten one side, loosen the other, that'll move the rim over. You'll true it. Um, in the case of dishing, to get move it over, you'll literally tighten this 32 spoke wheel. You'll tighten all 16 spokes on one side while loosening all 16 spokes on the other. And like I said, the, when you Google it, you'll, you'll see how. You'll come to truing, tighten one here, tighten one there, maybe tighten a couple, maybe tighten a group. Out around, you're going to be tightening them in groups together, pulling the rim toward the, toward the hub. And you're going to keep doing that in micro adjustments until you get a wheel that is true, that is round, that is dished, and where you have all the spokes, the tension that you want to be. And don't, like I said, don't stress it. If you, if you can't just by hand feel how tight spokes should be, because you haven't built a million wheels before, no worries. Just grab this 
order it off the park website or well no you can't buy it directly from park you can if you're in the bike business you can buy this from quality tools if you're if you're private you can buy one of these off of um, Amazon probably eBay too um, I think I got this one on Amazon and you can then take your tension readings and you're just going to keep slowly working your way toward getting all those variables in the very narrow window that you want true round dished tensioned thanks for watching